Hey everyone, the Talking Dads podcast is brought to you by Little Scholars Early Learning Center. Whether your family needs infant care, a preschool program, or before and after school care, Little Scholars' highly rated step-up to quality programs provide quality early childhood education at an affordable price. Visit www.littlescholars.net to get in contact with an enrollment specialist and schedule a tour of any of their five Lake County campuses. Here's the deal. Talking Dads fans are getting a little bonus. Mention that you heard about them uh, through our podcast and when you tour and you'll receive $25 off of your registration fee. Again, that's Little Scholars Early Learning Center where children learn, play, and grow together. We are also brought to you by Pub Fredo Gastropub. Uh, Pub Fredo was voted Best Gastropub in Cleveland in 2019 by Cleveland Magazine Silver Spoon Awards. We love Pub Fredo. Their menu is chef-inspired, always pushing the limits of traditional pub fare. Uh, the other night I had a burger, I believe it was called the Pub Burger. It was incredible. Cooked perfectly. It was amazing. Uh, and you won't have a problem pairing your favorite item on the menu with their great selection of local craft beers, crafted cocktails, and of course, an amazing bourbon and whiskey selection. I went with the uh, Bullet 10-Year uh, with my Pub Burger. All of this in a cozy, fun, come-as-you-are atmosphere. You can check them out at pubfredo.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Pubfredo Gastropub. In a world where moms continue to dominate parenting authority and a father's role is minimized in society, two dads take on the toughest parenting topics on a weekly basis, all while drinking bourbon. They are the Talking Dads. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Talking Dads. Uh, we are actually doing a take two tonight. Uh, we had our good buddy Tim Lowe in here and uh, full disclosure, <laughs> what, about a month ago? Uh, Something like that? Three over, weeks ago? Over, more than a month ago? I don't know. Yeah, it was over a month it ago. It was a little while ago. Uh, Tim came in here and we had an just epic show. It was, it was awesome. And uh, went to edit the show and we had absolutely no audio it's the first time it's ever happened yeah, and hopefully bad. the last time the gods weren't with us that night but but uh, tonight luckily tim has uh graced us with his presence again and it actually kind of works out cuz uh i want to talk to you about something that you just recently did so um yeah. before we get started for those of you cuz we know you uh give us your dad profile who you are your kids things like that and uh, then we'll get started. Me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, I got two kids. Uh, my daughter's 21, and my son is uh, 25, and he's uh, living in Atlanta. And uh, we've been through some stages in life. And uh, right now, my daughter graduated from Ohio Christian University in Columbus. My son graduated from uh, Georgia State University, and he's into photography and uh things like this, and he's also a singer, and I'm an author. I wrote a book, uh, an autobiography, and I use it to help kids. And uh, I go to schools, churches, wherever I need it, to um, talk to uh, kids about life, about everything that happens, and, and adults too, but um, I like to go to the schools, and I like to talk to kids. Yeah. yeah. And have a, you know, have a, it, it, it's actually just a fun time, and you just sit there, and you interact with these kids. You you don't hold the stage, right? You know you you give you give them something and then they give you a lot and you just keep talking to them and seeing where their heads at and I, you know it's 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 all about getting along and stuff like that. A teacher asked me one time. He says, uh, "So he goes, you're not a teacher." I said, "That's correct." And he goes, "So he goes, what do you do?" I said, "Well, you're good at math. You're good at English." whatever. I said, I teach life. And I said, I teach life through experience. And these are the things that I, I, I give them examples of mm -hmm. what happened to me. And in my book, it also states that, you know, I wasn't the greatest kid, but I'm going to lead by example. I'm not some guy that's just going to tell you something. I'm a guy that it's happened to. And I'm saying that it might go this way for you. So what you need to do is do the things that you need to do so that 
you don't live the life that I live sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so, uh, Tim and I used to work together, uh, back when I was over at the power plant, good times there. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, we've talked about this before, but I remember you were one of those guys. So you, uh, you were like, for lack of a better term, like our controller, right? Like you used to be able you used to tell us where we we're supposed to go when, we, you know, things we needed to check, all that kind of stuff. And I remember like, um, just like the positive vibe and positive attitude. And you were always like genuinely, um, thoughtful about, Hey Ian, what's going on, man? How, you know, what's going on with your girl, what's going on with, you know, with life and we could have real conversations. Right. And so I think that speaks in itself of now what you're really focusing on. Cause I remember that's when you gave me your book for the first time and I read it and I was like, Oh shit. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, all right, I get why this guy is so positive about life and why he's so, um, genuinely interested in helping people. Because the experiences that you've been through, and we're going to get to some of those uh, in this podcast, but, you know, it, it makes a whole lot of sense. And, and Steve can probably tell you this after getting to know you a little bit the last time around. Like, once you get to know who you are, and then you read the book, it all kind of makes sense. And, and it's interesting, like, you were just talking about, like, being up on stage with these kids and everything like that. And I thought to myself, that's exactly what this show is. Exactly. Yeah. Like, like we're not here talking to you and saying, this is what you need to do. It's almost, I would imagine that you get the same, um, benefit from learning from these other kids and, and getting the satisfaction of, of connecting with somebody, uh, that we do when we get to talk to a dad or, you know, or we interact with somebody online about a show that we did or whatever. And so that's really, really cool to hear. It's the, the, the seriously bottom line of, of, everything in every relationship, be it kids, be it wives, you know, your friends, your associates, uh, associates, it, it's communication. You know, mm-hmm. you, you know, you have to talk to people. I've known people all my life that I know nothing about, but we're there. And then all of a sudden, you know, you sit with a guy like I sit with Ian sometimes and we'd be alone, you know, and you sit to, and you know what, if you really get to know somebody, Mm-hmm. then you, you, you got this feeling, man. And you, and you, and then you can relate to where he's at in life and what he's doing. Just like these kids, man, when you talk to them and, you know, and after you find out what's going on in their life, like, you know, maybe they got a messed up home life and stuff like that and things that are going on. And then you, then you actually realize why they are the way they mm-hmm. are. Yeah, for sure. And then maybe you can connect with them and, I was just about to say, it's that connection. And the amazing thing with that is, too, is not everybody has someone to talk to. Right. right. So for someone to keep something bottled up that's a problem that they have, or maybe they they feel like they're crazy. You know what I mean? Like, to be able to sit and talk to somebody and pour those feelings out and have somebody to understand what they're going through, that's that's huge. Talking to somebody is a big thing. So not only talking to somebody, because you brought up a good point, like... Sometimes you just need somebody different to talk, talk to. to. Absolutely. It's, it's not, not your parents. It's not your parents. It's not your, you know, guidance counselor at school right, who, right. who no matter what the situation, you know, if you're a kid, you think that they have a different agenda or they don't really care or whatever. And I mean, there's plenty of counselors out there that, that do care and, and probably connect with their kids. But right. sometimes I, I know for me as I mean, what I was 22. No, I was like 24. I think when I started at the plant. Um, something like that. And I don't know, man, it was just, I guess here's the thing, like, and this is just, this will be the last time, you know, not the last time, but you know, this will be the end of my little, uh, (laughs) you're the man. I appreciate you. But like, seriously, I worked in, we worked over there and you know, hundreds of other people, you know, interacting with hundreds of people every single day. And there's, a handful that I can say that I honestly connected with and was like, all right, this is somebody that I can connect with and, and learn something from. And, you know, this is the right people to be around. So thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. And I mean, it just shows 10 years later, 12 years later, whatever it is, yeah, we're still we're here. sitting here yep. talking and having yeah. a conversation, you know, about not even about work, like, right. Like that's yep. just about life. We don't even talk about any of that, uh, you know, and, and, and that's exactly what we did at work. We didn't talk about work. Right. We talked about what was going on and, 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 you know, your life, my life, you know, and you, sh- you share 
your experiences through life. That's what my book is all about. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing is I'm sharing what happened to me and it may not be written as in some people's liking, but you know what? It's, it's, it's me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's genuinely what happened to me and explaining to kids and other people in life that you don't have to live this negative life that you're living. You know, you, you, if you want change, you can make the change, mm -hmm. but you have to, you have to be focused on doing what you're doing. And that, and that's, that's what you do when you talk, you know, just like we're talking about talking dads, mm -hmm. suburban dads, you know, there's not any, when I was growing up, there wasn't any dads to really, you know, like talk to my, my, my real father left us when I was 11 years old, but my stepfather, he stepped in and it, he's this quiet type guy and he's a uh, police officer and then turning into something else, police officer, way up on the food chain, police officer. Mm -hmm. And he would, he would be shining in his car or something like that. And he'd have this nice, mild conversation with me. I always felt like I was like, uh, like, like, like a client. <laughs> yeah. And, and you just talk, you know, and we would talk and he would ask me things and, you know, just doing his, doing his thing. But that's, that's what you need, you know, while you're doing something, if your kid is taking an interest in what you're doing, mm -hmm. be interested in him or her also. Yeah. hundred percent. And, and that's how you get it. That's how you get it. And, and, and it's a, it's a molding situation where, you know, like be it your kid is three years old and he's watching you lift weights or he's watching you wash the car and he might pick up a rag and wash the car or mm -hmm. try to lift weights with you. But instead of saying, you know, hey, you need to step back and you might put him in where he's safe or something like that or your daughter. Sure. But keep that line of communication open all the time mm -hmm. because they're forming their lives upon you on sure. the day that they're born. Sure. Yeah, so that's, yeah, what, that's what you well, need to do. Well, what's the old, uh, the, the, the classic thing is what, uh, you know, I, I never felt so helpless as when my dad made me hold the flashlight while he was working on the car. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like you couldn't hold a flashlight, right? Because right. it's not, not, you know, and it's just like, you really think about that. I mean, we're molding these, these, these kids, these young men and women yeah. that, that we're expecting not only to, you know, contribute to society, but one day take care of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you know what I mean? Exactly. And like, like, why wouldn't we put as much effort as we possibly can? And, and uh, it, I think it's tough in the moment, you know, like you said, if you're, if instead of pushing them aside, and mm -hmm. like being like, hey, move, I need to get this done. Right. Try to get them included, even if it's something like, all right, work on this, hand them something just so they're included in what you're doing, but not shunning them and telling them right. to get away yeah. from you. And like, yeah, it, exactly. you know, and, and I feel like it's easy for someone to do that because in the moment you don't realize what you're doing. Sure. Like you're trying to get your task done. Right. But the big picture is make sure at the same time, like you're teaching them, you're including them, you're showing them how it's done. Right. Right. And um, that's, that's, that's important. That's a, that's a, Great point right there. So well, I, I think something about your book and then just you in general uh, is there's a lesson to be learned in just about everything that we do. Right. And right. so mm -hmm. right. if we take that to heart and say, you know, it might be washing dishes, like you said, washing the car, whatever it is, lifting weights, like there's a lesson to be learned. And if we took the time um, to, to focus on and try and get at their level, like how much better is that going to be for them? And then quite honestly for you. That's well, yeah, true. absolutely. Yeah. My dad. So growing up, my dad would always, like you said, working on the car, for example, my dad was always working on the cars and helping us. And he was always showing us along the way, this is how you do it. Yeah. You know? So I learned, I mean, for basic things that a lot of people don't know how to do changing brakes, changing a tire. You know what I mean? I knew how to do that stuff when yeah. I had to do it on my own. And I mean, just trust me, my dad's still very important to me. I still call him for advice to fix something like, Hey, should I be doing this? Like, I mean, my dad is, I still depend on him a lot for things like that, but he did teach me along the way, electrical, things like that. That, yeah. but that was just easy stuff. Like he was working on something and we, he would teach us along the way how to do it. And that's huge. And that's cool. And like, here you are, you know, mid thirties and you remember that. Absolutely. And you, and that's, I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why we do this is because I think we both were very, very fortunate in that, you know, like my dad was, uh, it was never like the technical stuff, mm -hmm. but it was the, 
like a lot of leadership stuff and a lot of like, um, you know, really good example. So my daughter, uh, who's two and a half, she's doing this thing at school where she's very, uh, sassy is what we'll call it. She, she's got this little <laughs> attitude with her right now. And, you know, so I was talking to her about it. I'm like, Sloan, what's with the sass? She goes, I'm not sassy. I'm like, all right, you know, whatever. And so we're, we're just kind of talking. I'm like, all right, it's time to clean up your toys. And she goes, I know clean up. I know you're going to clean up. <laughs> yeah. And so like, she put like two things away and she goes, I'll finished. And I go, no, we're not all done. And I, I talked to my son. I'm like, Hey Gibson, I'm like, what do, what do we always say when you're trying to do something? And he looks at me and he looks at his sister and he goes, if you're going to do something, do it right. right. I remember that. I mean, my dad drilled that into me. Mm -hmm. He's like, if you're going to do something, do it right. Yeah. And so I'm very, you know, proud dad moment right there is like to see my son, like he's, he's getting that and, and he did. And then he went and showed her how to, you know, clean it up. And you know, it was just awesome, you know? And I think those are the lessons that I took from my dad. But yeah. again, that's why we do this is because we were very fortunate to have that. Um, and I mean, not everyone is. No, well, you, you know what? If you ever, ever want to look at something and we're talking about dads, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, take a look at grandparents with your children, okay? <laughs> they may not have been the greatest to you, but watch how they interact with your, yeah. with your kids. And the things that they learn from their their grandparents, and you know, you're thinking to yourself, "Well, why the hell did he teach me that?" You know, look yep. look, look at what he's doing, and you know, he's he's playing with my kid. You know, hell, yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> too busy to play with me. And he's always going somewhere doing something else. You know, but yeah. but you know, watch watch what they do and watch the interaction. Yeah, my my son has never forgotten his grandfather. He passed away. He had Alzheimer's. But my son is into photography. My father-in-law was so much into photography, and my son called me and he told me, he said, hey, uh, Grandpa left me something. And I said, what did Grandpa leave? You know, and, he, and he says, he says it's not, it's not a material thing, Dad. And I'm like, well, what are you talking about? He goes, I'm doing this photography thing. He goes, I don't know nothing. He goes, but you know what? I know everything. And he said, you know why? He says, because I hung around Grandpa and I watched him. And he said, and he gave me something that I could live with. And my son's going out and he's um, doing photo shoots and stuff like that for people in Atlanta. And he's big time. He came back here for Christmas and he did photo shoots for Christmas in our basement with singers and stuff like that. But he's, he's crediting that to what his grandfather was. That's mm -hmm. awesome. You know? And, and, it's, and it, you know, anybody that has had a, you know, a father that's just constantly working. Mm -hmm. And you know how tired they are sure. and, how, and how tired you get and how unresponsive you are to your children. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Your, your kid is looking at you and is yep. as tired as you are. Sometimes just just take a moment back there and 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 laugh because I'm tired, you know, and he doesn't he, do, he doesn't really understand your tiredness or yeah. she doesn't understand your tiredness what she wants to be as close and he wants to be as close to you mm -hmm. and that's yep. what you do man that's so it, true it's true and it's in yeah. in, in, in the moment like i said before it's hard to realize that and it's yeah. it's it, it hate to be like in past tense and be like oh man i should have taken the extra I do, 20 minutes i do minutes. that all it's the just, time yep. i do and that's and that's what i think about that's great about this yeah. what we do cuz we get to sit and talk about this stuff and it helps me to Constantly. remind myself yeah. like okay hey don't be too tired yep. right, right. I, I can you know tell what? he's going to go to bed i i can tell when we haven't done an episode in like a few weeks or something like that i'm so much less pace, patient with my kids and i'm serious no it's it's it, this is actually for us and we've said it a thousand times this is like therapy and it's and it's great cuz i mean it really helps me in my life at home yeah, and it, it, it really, really does. does. And it's a, uh, and it's a great thing for anybody, a guest, anybody who's listening to just kind of realize, Hey, I mean, you see stuff all the time. You read things and you see these articles and it's like, yeah, you take some stuff in, right? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. But when you sit down and you actually talk about it or listen to it, yeah. that's, that's a whole nother thing, man. It 100%. really hit you. It hits you like, it, and, and when you get that child to open up to you fully, you know, mm -hmm. Like my son's asking me, he's, com he's coming to me, he's asking me things about his girlfriend, you know, and things mm -hmm. like that, and, and, and all kinds of stuff. And those, those are the things that, you know, like, if, you're, if your kid is opening up to you and telling you things that are going on, or 
or, you know, speaks freely at the table about what happened to him today. You know, it may, it may be minor to you, but it is major to them. And they remember. Yeah. 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 And, and, they, so, and they remember how you handle it. Well, so there's a quote that we use in child care all the time. So, you know, of course, I'm in child care and we have so we have kids as little as six weeks old. But it's really like the three and four year olds. There's a quote that we use that the child gives you a rock. You take that rock and you embrace it and you show them how much you're appreciative. Right. Because the rock might mean nothing to you, but that's all that they have to give. And they chose to give it to you. Yeah. And so. You can use the rock as a metaphor for anything, and you should use it for anything, you know, whether it's something that they made that's physical, or it's a question, or it's a comment that they're choosing to talk to you about something because they trust you, and they value what they can learn from you. Mm -hmm. And so I think if we remember that, you know, it, it... it can do a lot for them and then just a ton for you to, to just to remember, like you're the one that they chose to come to with yeah, this. Because right. it could get open up to you early and if you start ignoring them that soon, yeah, then they'll, they'll shut it off. I mean, mm. they, they'll just, I mean, that's, that's, that's tough. You don't realize it at the time and sometimes it's too late. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's, um, like you said, your son's very open with you. He talks to you a lot. Now, do you about feel, everything. And d- was he always like that? Or was it like, you said he lives in Georgia right now. Yeah. yeah. So do you feel like your relationship is, do you think he opens up a little bit more now that he's further away or I, th- I think that we always had it. Yeah. yeah. I think that, and, and maybe he might, <laughs> he might say that, that no, we didn't, but we, we've always had it, yeah. you know, and, and, um, my son was too big to play midget football. Mm-hmm. So he had to run to lose a few pounds. So this was the most absolutely most grueling thing that he'd ever done in his life. And I'd make him, and it was just a mile, but I would make him run with me. And he would, oh, he would just bitch <laughs> the storm. And he would walk, he would run down the street in tears and wondering why he has to do this. And all those other kids made it and stuff like that. And we're running and we're running and we're running to make this, to make this team. So we had this way in and I took all the pads out of his pants, took his shoulder pads off. <laughs> and I'm thinking maybe I can get away with this, you know? <laughs> so they weighed him and he was good to go. And he was sitting on that bench, and after he'd come in after a play or something like that, he goes, "Dad helps." He goes, "Thank you for helping me make it." You know, that's awesome. And and you know, I'm thinking to myself, you know, and and I'm like, I'm like, well, you did that yourself. He goes, "No." He goes, "I would have never made it without you, man. Thank you." He goes, "I can't thank you enough, man. I love you, dude." You know. Yeah. And there, there it is. There mm-hmm. and what lies the, lies the thing, you know, that you keep and you keep doing that, you know, <clears throat> and keep reinforcing that. And it makes your kids stronger. I'll never forget my buddy Ed has two kids, two boys. Mm-hmm. The older one, he's, he's really passionate about, passionate about what he does in sports and stuff like that. But this little guy, and um, Brennan, he would come to box with us at the boxing club at Title. So one day he hands me this plastic gold coin with a four-leaf clover on it. And he goes, I got this for you. And he's handing it to me, okay? And this is me and Ed, we boxed for eight years. This, mm-hmm. is, this is in the beginning stages when Ed used to have to bring them sometimes. Mm-hmm. And they're a little bit unruly because sure. they're kids. Yeah. yeah. So we go into boxing one day. And Brennan, he's standing there. First of all, Brennan's a real passionate kid. He hugs me. He says, how you doing, man? I'm like, okay. I said, hey, man. And I pulled that coin out of my freaking uh, bag. And I said, I never go anywhere where I have to do some boxing or some training without this man because you gave it to me. It's awesome. That. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it may not be, I mean, you may not think about it, but yeah, I, I keep that with me all the time. And I think about that kid. That kid, that kid was so just, he was, he was blown away. And he said, I gave you that a long time ago. I said, yeah, and I'm going to keep it. I said, I'm going to give you this thing at your graduation, man. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so yeah. Cool. And, and, you know, and things like that, that, you know, and you, you got to show them you care. You know? Yeah, you absolutely. Care. Yeah. Well, it, and too, I mean, isn't that just like the epitome of what fatherhood is? You right, know, right. Somebody else's kid, but we're dads 
and it doesn't stop with your own children, right? I mean, right. like if we, you know, if we want to to build a better community, a better place and everything like that, you treat all these kids the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I love that so much. That, that's, again, not I already said I was done, but just speaks to, <laughs> you know, the person that you are, man. Nah, you're not done. I mean, Keep that's exactly what you used to do with the plant. You know what I mean? Like you used to, hey, remember you were telling me about this situation? I'd be like, Tim, I forgot what we were talking about. That was like two months ago. <laughs> yeah, like, no, 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 I got an idea for you. And, and you know what I mean? Like, but you listen. You listen. You care. That's, like, that's, that's cool. That's huge. And that's why we'd love yeah. to have you on the show. Absolutely. And for you as a public speaker, someone who goes to schools and talk, talks to these kids, and I, I mean, I know from talking to you before that you've changed some lives. I mean, I've, I know you've met some people and some people that have come up to you after reading your book or just meeting you and saying, hey, man, you've you helped me. <laughs> well, you, you, I mean, you can tell us, I mean, I know you have some stories, but well, in the same respect, you know, I wrote the book to help kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was going to ask like why writing a book to most people is something that, I mean, to me, like I talk, I've joked about it. Like, Oh, that'd be cool to write a book, but like, it just, it was, in you know, me. it was, just, in me. you just wanted yeah. to do it. Like yeah. no one pushed you to do it. It was uh, uh, something that you it's, felt. It's, it's something that I always wanted to do. And you know okay. what? I, 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 got, I got this, you know, I've had this feeling all my life of being like a nobody, okay? Just, you know, a nobody. Nobody cares, you know, whatever. So I'm writing this book to tell these kids that, you know what? You don't have to be that nobody. And as much as I put out and help kids with that book, that book has helped me to grow sure. as an individual. And the feedback that I get from these kids and from adults and things like that is beyond me. I've had peop people, after they read this book, they'll come up and open up to me like I've never had before. And it's, and it's not, it, and just like I told you two guys, it's not about selling books. Mm -hmm. What it is, is about making a great community and making people count. Yeah. What you do is make them count, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and always remember people. And I'm not great at names, but I'm great at faces. And I do things, you know, when I see mm -hmm. a kid, you know. I saw a kid um, a couple weeks ago in a restaurant. And he has friended me from about five years ago. And he's a, um autistic. Mm -hmm. But I looked at him, and we looked at each other in a restaurant, and we started laughing. And my wife's standing there like, what the hell's going on here, you know? <laughs> And I hugged his kid, man, and he looks at me and he goes, hey, man, he goes, I still got your book. He goes, thanks a lot, man. And I'm like, what? You know, and he goes, man, he goes, I read stuff in that book every day. He goes, it helps me out. He goes, it helps my day, you know, and he and he goes, it helps me not to do the wrong things because there's a lot of there's yeah. that yeah. Book, that book ain't great on what what life is, you know, or, or what. You know, it's 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 all the wrong stuff until you get to a certain point to be the sure. right stuff. Yeah. But along the way, it tells you what, you know, my mistakes. Sure. And it shows you what it not gives to you do. context yep. for. Yeah. 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 And, it, you know, it, it, it helped me out tremendously. So and, it, and writing a book is not it, it, it's not as scary as you think it is. You just sit down and you write. You just go someplace and you and you write and you just write. That's all. Mm -hmm. And I've always been that way. You know, I write stuff down about working out. I write how I feel. I wrote a book about working out, which I've never released yet. <laughs> and I promised myself that I would never release it until I'm in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be another 50 years before. I die. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, those are the, those are the things that, you know, just cherish every moment that you have. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, you take. You take for granted, you know, you take these pictures like somebody mentioned a father daughter dance the other day and they're showing their kids. And I saw it happen to have me and my daughter, which she's 21 now, but when she was about seven years old at a father daughter dance with her on my lap. So I showed that to that person mm -hmm. and said, Hey, save what you got and remember everything that's done. Cause your kids are going to remember, you know? Yeah. Yep. And, 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 and that father daughter dance, what was really so funny about that? was as Ian knows, we can't we we couldn't call off at work. Right. And so I went in and I asked the supervisor, I said, hey listen, I got a seven year old girl. I gotta go to this father daughter dance. I know it's not. He said, you can't do it. I said, okay. Guess where I was? Mm -hmm. 
I did it. Yeah. And then the repercussions afterwards. And I was glad that I did it. Sure. But there was a supervisor that understood and he was man enough to say, do what you need to do. Yeah. And he, we went in and we talked about it, but you know, my seven year old daughter wrote this guy a letter and it said, thank you, Mr. Power Plant Supervisor for letting my dad go to the father daughter dance. And she, and, and I didn't tell her to write it. Mm -hmm. and, she, yeah. and she had this little letter and it was written in crayon. Mm -hmm. And she said, dad I said, yeah. She goes, give this to your boss. So I gave it to the guy and he sat there and he looked at it and he had to get up and walk out of the room because he was in tears. But he went upstairs and he told the management, yeah, I let the guy off. Look at this. He goes, see, that's what it is. And to this day, my friend still has that letter. Yeah. Because, you know, you, and that's a touching thing. And my daughter remembers yeah. this guy. So that's cool, man. That's, I mean, that's, yeah. and that's what it's all about. I mean, uh, you know, whether it's work or just, you know, social friendships or yeah. it's school or whatever it is, it's, you know, get back to humanity. Right. I right. mean, we preach, you know, I don't want to say we preach, but we talk about all the time about how our big goal is to raise good humans. Mm -hmm. And like, if we can accomplish that, everything else falls Absolutely. into place. And right. At the right. same time, so, help other people be able to do that for their kids. Right. Cause we're setting examples, right? You're setting example, not only for, you know, the, the other people around you, the other adults around you that, you know, mm -hmm. it's very easy yeah. to fall in that trap. Hey, it's yeah. work. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. And I know how that was break. there. Like yep. you, oh, it was, a, it was, a, it was you absolutely know. crazy there. Um, but you know, we do a little bit of that and that rubs off a little bit on somebody else. And then it rubs off on your kids so that when they have kids they they see, you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. a whole cycle and that's awesome. And, yeah, you, and you show people you care, you know, you know, like if you see somebody walking across the street, that's having a problem walking across the street like that, you know, you do that in front of your kid and your kid's going to say, well, why did you do that? Mm -hmm. Because they needed help. Yep. And, and those are the things that you do. And it's the small yep. things. Yep. And and which are huge for other people. I mean, just helping someone out, doing something that's right when you don't have yeah. to. Yeah. Walking, exactly. you know, walking exactly. past something. Yep. But if you could help out in any way you can, just do something small, just for anybody. Just the little bit of help goes a long way. And that's yep. huge. I mean, that's amazing for a kid to see a parent do. Right. Because they take right. that with them. They That's always, that's burned in their memory. Well, because we know, too, as adults, actions speak louder than words, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So if you can show it and live it, and it's not just a, uh, you, you just, you give yourself some authenticity that, okay, dad knows what he's doing. Yeah. Like, that yep. makes sense. Yep. That's who dad is. I want to be like that, you know? Yeah. And, and, and you find out that if you do something to help somebody, you it, it comes back like, oh, yeah. like tenfold. tenfold. Man, it really you, does, Yeah, man. you just like... You know, where is this coming from? You know, it's the worst kept yeah. secret. And yet it's such a difficult concept for yeah. many, so many people yeah. to, to understand. And some people don't get it. No, they don't. Right. Yeah. And, and just like going and once again, going back to the book, the book is not about me. It's 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 my life. Yeah. But it's not about me. It's about other people. Mm -hmm. It's about what you can do what you can do for others and stuff like that. That's what you, that's what, that's what life is about. What you can do to help somebody else. You may not have everything, but there's small things that you do in life every day that shows what kind of integrity and fortitude that you have, you know, toward people and helping your fellow man. I always look at these Facebook, everybody, everybody, promotes bad things yeah okay oh, man and, and, and it's you know where the what? attention is it's, it's comical it's terrible it's comical and it's terrible at the same mm -hmm. time you're right but you know what i i i don't go into politics on facebook never i don't <laughs> i don't there's a whole lot of stuff i do but what i do in facebook is i try to promote the good every day i love that, you that see. man i, I love seeing and your real life I heroes your, yeah. i love your stuff that you post. he does his real life positive. heroes because yep. you don't see it all. you don't oh, see a lot of that and around and it's exactly love it and you know what some people have gigged me on that real life hero situation mm -hmm. because I, I put down real life hero yeah. when somebody does something real life hero. And then there's other people that will see that and something that I'll comment on. They'll say, yeah, right, Tim, real life hero. Mm -hmm. you, you know what, dude, you really don't know what it's about. No, because right. if you, if you, if you think that that's so bad that I'm promoting something that 
and maybe it, it, a superstar. Like I happen to like LeBron James. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you don't like him, that's fine. Okay, yeah. but you know, to me, he's been a real life hero, and he's doing what I want to do. He's helping kids. Yeah, yeah. So how can he not be a real life hero to me? He gave out a thousand scholarships the other day. To it's pretty these cool. Kids. Yeah. Yeah. No, he gives back a lot and, it, and it's amazing. And it's, that's, those are heroes. Yeah. It's so funny I mean, to yeah. me, especially when you talk about LeBron, like, and yeah, he left twice. Right. Man's got a career. Yeah, I mean, what, what, yeah, yeah. you know, I, and, and look, I'll be the first to admit, I remember especially not so much the second time, but the first time, first time man, I was yeah. mad. Oh, you I know? was so mad. Nobody. It was, was it was, yeah. You know, but the reality is, is especially in athletics, you know, pro- professional athletes, there's so much negativity about, well, this guy got caught with, you know, drugs or this guy beat up his girlfriend and this and that. Right. Like, there's one thing you can say about LeBron is you never see any of that kind of stuff, you know? You know what you see and about like, LeBron? And he still gets so much hate. He gets a lot of hate. You know what the thing about LeBron is you see him, he posts things, it's positive. Yeah. It's him with his kids. It's him helping other kids. It's it's all positive things. Well, you yeah. see, uh, there's, there's another... There's another guy that I used to, and I, and I had a blog. We had this thing. It was called Jock Journal. And what happened was everybody would pick a team. I said, I want the Browns. And then, the guy, and then this other guy was a Steeler fan. He goes, why do you want that? And I said, because I'm not a crappy Steeler fan. That's why. <laughs> so that was the year of Johnny Manziel. Mm. Let me tell you about this blog. These guys are getting a couple hundred people looking at their blogs. I'm getting 10,000, 50,000. And they're like, well, why is this guy Controversy getting Controversy It's Johnny Manziel. But mm-hmm. let me tell you about Johnny Manziel. You know, if you read the history, I went back to Johnny Manziel in kindergarten with everything that he ever did all the way up to his present time and made this blog. And I, I won 500 bucks out of it, mm-hmm. but which was nice. Yeah. And everybody knew I was going to win because that was the weekend Johnny Manziel went to Vegas. Click, 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 click. They were like, what, just give them the money now. <laughs> But, you know, in all honesty, I know people talked about Johnny Manziel, but you know what I would like to do? I would have loved to mentor that dude. Yeah. I would, I would, I would mold that guy into something. That's just like Kareem Hunt, mm-hmm. for instance, and we're all on sports now. But That's okay. <laughs> but Kareem, sports do, Kareem Hunt doing his thing, you know, and he's getting caught with weed and he's doing mm-hmm. this and that, which, you know, everybody thinks that weed isn't gr- such a great deal, but it is to the NFL. Okay? Sure. But a guy like Kareem Hunt, I would like to sit down yeah. and talk to him every week and say, hey, man, what's the deal, you know? Or, you know, what, 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 what can I do and to help you? You know, you, you have all, these, all the money in the world, mm-hmm. but what you need is guidance. That's yeah. what Johnny Manziel, Johnny Manziel could have been a great, oh, yeah. great guy. He had all the talent. But, yeah, but he didn't have... Josh Gordon, right? All right. those guys, and yeah. and that's where you start with your kids, and that's what that's what this this talking dads is about. Mm-hmm. What you do is you take that and you mold your kid into what you want your kid to be. Mm-hmm. Don't ignore him, you know. And everything that he does, or she does, laugh, have fun, and have a good time with it. And it may not be something that you want to do, like getting up after night shift at ten o'clock in the morning to go watch a ball game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you're just, you know, Bless it. things Thank like you. things like that. But you know what? You have to show these kids that this is this is right. This is what you know. And, and it and it rolls downhill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you want if you want to be safe on the streets. You know, help your kids. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it all starts at home. Yeah, it does. And I, I was watching this thing about speaking of sports. We're on the topic. Um, Kobe Bryant. I was watching this video about him, and he was talking about his dad, and he said he was in a tournament, and he had zero points, and he just had a terrible, I think I forgot how many games it was, but he's, he just did terrible, and his dad came up to him after the game and said, I don't care about how many points you scored, I don't how bad, I care about how bad you did, he's like, I still love you, and I'm still proud of you, Right. and he said that stuck with him his entire life, so his dad, obviously, he talks about it a lot, about how his dad played a major role, and you know Kobe Bryant was like, one of the most positive, hardest working people. Like you talk, you hear anybody, any other athlete that's yeah talk, talks about Kobe, you know his reputation of being such a hard worker. That's what he was. And 
He, cre- he, I mean, credits he's got to, the, he credits that to his dad. I mean, there's a whole yep. thing. I mean, yep. even before his, you know, unfortunate passing, yeah. you know, Mamba mentality, that was a thing, it was a, you yeah. know, for a long time. He, I mean, this, That's this what past it is. year, he, Work hard. he would go around to other sports teams and talk to these guys. Um, what's, he came he, to, to uh, talk to the Browns. Talk to year. the Browns, yeah. Travis right. Landry, right. was he, t- he talked about it recently, about how much that meant to him. And, like, that was huge. Like, that, yeah. I mean, Kobe was just a perfect example of just a great father yeah. and he had a great dad and he's he talks about it all the time he used to talk about that all the time and that's just but you're right it. though i mean kind of going back to the beginning of it was like unfortunately the the negative or the bashing or the you know yeah the the crazy stories th- those are what get attention right and and so right. that's what you know well, it's, it's we got to change that. Well, it's right? tough because like, like the negativity, like you, those are the type of videos you see. Those are the, the fights, the bullying, and what do you see people doing in those videos? Every single one of them has their phone mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. Right. There's not one person out there trying to stop it. Yeah. Right? There's a good video out there, man. I haven't seen it in a while, actually. And it's this dude that rolls up on these kids. That, you know, it's like a street fight or whatever. And look, I, I know exactly what you're talking I, about. I'm all about today. like. Yeah. Boys are going to be boys, whatever. Like, there's a time and place where you got to kind of do that or whatever. That's fine. But this dude rolls up on them, and he's like, stop, shake hands. Here's what's going to happen. And then it, like, shows, like, the progression of how he comes back and visits this neighborhood. And these kids Mm -hmm. who didn't have any kind of guidance or whatever. I mean, you want to talk about real-life hero, like this dude. That guy. And I don't even remember... I don't remember what the guy did or who, you know, I think he was just a random guy that was walking by. Yeah, and he just saw right. it and then he came right. over and he decided and did to the right thing. In. Right. And he like, talked to all these kids. Yeah. All he's like, he's like, you, you're taking a video of this. You, you're taking a video of this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, you know like, exactly yep, what yep. video I'm talking yeah. about. I mean, yeah. and, it, and that's, that's what kind of person you need in those situations. Cause there's not many, right. You know what I mean? Not a, no, a lot of times people don't step in and that could change lives. And that's like what you're doing for these kids. When you go to these schools and talk to them, I mean, just getting out and, and talking to them, that sticks with them, and that could change everything for them. Well, you, sometimes you realize, you know, and, and as, as you're sitting here talking to these kids, it, it, and you, all of a sudden, you know, a kid will tell you, just like a kid, I had a, I had a week in uh, Richmond Heights, and I was talking to these kids. And this kid looked at me, and he goes, nobody ever really talked to me about anything like what you're talking about. He goes, all I do is come to school. He goes, I go down in my basement. He said, I do my homework. And he goes, I watch TV, and then I go to bed. I said, well, where are your parents? He goes, they're upstairs smoking weed and drinking mm-hmm. beers. And then he said, they're playing cards with each other and stuff. He's, and I said, every day? He goes, yeah, every day. So I'm like, I said, so I said, so what do you do? He goes, well, he goes, they taught me how to roll joints. <laughs> and he goes, and I get them drinks, and I put ice in their glass and I'm like hmm. I said that's great you know but this, this and here is this mild mannered absolutely great kid mm-hmm. and nobody ever t- even took the interest to find out what he's about what they want him to do is you know and if he didn't do his homework he'd get beat you know stuff like that and all of a sudden he says uh, I want to play football and I was a weightlifting coach on their football team this kid, he turned out to be the, like the greatest kid. He's a Seattle State Trooper now. Really? Yeah. And he went to title boxing. He told title boxing Casey that he wanted to come here, but he didn't have the money. And his mom, and his, his mom was working, doing things, you know. And dad left, of course. And I took him. I said, uh, and this was like on Veterans Day, and he was going to the service. So I said, hey, Case, I said, uh, let, me, let me pay for this kid's membership for a year. I said, he'll be out of here. He's going to service. Casey looks at me, and he goes, huh. he goes, you want to pay for his membership? I go, yeah. He goes, not a chance. He goes, I'll let you pay some of it. He said, but he said, maybe we'll split it. He goes, I'll give you better than half. I'm like, really? That's cool. He goes, yeah. And this kid, he told me, he goes, I'm going to see my father. This is crazy. And we would ride up in my truck, and we would talk. And this kid was like, he had to have like 2% body fat, just all muscle and everything. And he could run, and he was a great kid. 
And I said, so you're going to see your, your father? I said, where is he at? He goes, in, he's in Detroit. I said, well, I said, have a good time. He goes, no, I got to go see him. He's in prison. I said, okay. I said, do you ever, he goes, I've never seen him before. So he goes up there. He finds out that he has two sisters, stepsisters. And then he finds out and he talks about his dad. He comes back, he talks to his dad, comes back, gets in my truck on Monday. So I said, hey, man, I said, how'd it go with your dad? He goes, my dad. And then he looks right me, looks me right in the eye and he goes, you're my dad, man. Hmm. And I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know? and, and I'm like, uh, okay. He goes, dude, he goes, nobody ever does anything for me like you've done for me. And I'm like, okay. And then he goes to the service. And he's this stellar type infantry everything. And then he gets a job in Seattle as a state trooper. And he sends me it. And I was going to go up there, but I couldn't because mm -hmm. we're working at the yeah, power. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And so he sends me pictures and stuff. And the kid got married. And he's uh, in the service now. And he went back because he had to go back, call of duty. And he's doing something, but... What a, what a, what a, what a, man. what a, he, his father missed the whole ball game, man. Yeah. You know, he missed everything. He missed this great kid and he has a brother and there's these two guys, man, they're great kids. They never do anything wrong, you know, and this kid was always, every day we get up, go work out and that's what he liked to do. And he yeah, was, how many kids are out there that aren't lucky enough to find Tim? Huh, true. You know, I mean, I mean, you, you have the kids that. They, I mean, parents like that could change their world. That's just, and that's just all negativity. But then you have the kids that are strong that yeah. could decide that, hey, I, I don't want to be like that. That kid, that kid found. But then you, and you, you can find somebody. Yeah. And you, you sure. can find, you could find yeah. someone like yourself who could help them and see, uh, see the light. I mean, like yeah. to see yeah. to show them a positive outlook and just. And drive him, and and he he was driven from the beginning. But you know, to be to be actually, you know, honest with you, you know, he he promoted that whole that whole thing. He didn't he didn't have a car. I'd go and pick him up. We'd go boxing, you know. And then he got a car, and then of course it wrecked. He got it mm -hmm. wrecked. So, but he you know he did the things that he was supposed to do. And then it took a while for him to put him in the service. It wasn't just like like when I was growing up, you know, if you signed up, you yeah right, you're you're gone. Yeah. So, but there's a little criteria difference nowadays. Sure. And so he had to wait and he was very impatient and he finally got the call and he went and he just excelled from there. Yeah. Became this great individual, you know? It's great. And, and, and see, those are, that's, that's, that's what you want to do, you know, do something like that, you know? And, it, you know, we always had, when I was a, a kid, there was always 15, 20 kids running around, you know, playing ball, having, doing whatever they do with each other. Mm -hmm. I don't see that anymore. No. And we, yeah. I mean, we talked about that before too. Cause like we grew yeah. up in a, a neighborhood where we had a, a core group of friends that that's what we did. We got together. We, every morning we wake up like in the summertime, right. Hop on our bikes and we'd meet up and we would just be outside, pick up baseball, football. Man, I remember every single day. And we wouldn't be, we wouldn't go inside. We'd go home for yeah. dinner. Well, there was always right like a, up. um, there was always like a, a, a rotation, right? Because you lived the furthest away, yeah. so you would always start. He would ride his bike, yep, and, I would, and I would, you would usually go to someone else's <laughs> house first. Like Arco's life, house. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, life four buddies. years old, man. Like, we, we, so I would start, I would start the, the rotation. I would, I would show up at one friend's house, get him going. Hop on, he would hop on his bike. We'd ride to the next friend's house, and we just all would. And I remember I would wait at my house, and I would be like, all right, when are they going to get here? Because Dad <laughs> would have me doing chores, or, you know, I'm splitting wood or something stupid. that He used to always make me split wood, and we never burned any wood. <laughs> <laughs> so this huge pile of wood behind the shed. <laughs> nice. But, like, I used to be like, oh, man, when are they going to get here? I'd be looking down the street and yeah. seeing any bikes yet. <laughs> you it's know? funny, though, because I would get to our first friend's house, and I would get there the earliest, because I knew I would have to help him with his chores. <laughs> So I'm like, right, we got a vacuum, so I'd be vacuuming his house with him, and then we'd <laughs> we'd be like, all right, let's go. We got to get to the rest of the guys, and we would just yeah. go down the line, get everybody, and we'd just get together and we'd play sports. But like you said, you don't really see it anymore, and I no. feel like almost it's it's a it's lost. It is yeah. lost, and then at the same time too, like when you do see them, you see these kids riding their bikes by themselves somewhere. You're like, whoa, you know, and then, yeah. like, then you're almost like worried for them because you hear all these stories now, and I don't know if it's more it's polarized or it's like more it's there's so much more. 
Um, so there's so many more stories. There's the social media thing with all these kids being right picked up or yep. you know yep. kidnapped, and um, I feel like that's always been an issue. I don't know if it's just more because you you see everything, you see every piece of news. Well, and again, the negative report. gets the attention, absolutely right. 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 You know, and the, and no one's going to write a story about kids playing pickup football game out in the the vacant lot. You know, because that's just a we should start we should those out there. We <laughs> really start should that stuff and being yep. like, hey, this look what we found today. Yep. You know, dude, I, I mean, would love to do that. So, I mean, it's all negativity. And um, but just to see kids out riding their bikes and just being. These, it was the best a, times, front man. Yard, like when you used to drive, like you'd be going past a kid, like a house and you'd see f- 10 bikes sitting out the front yard. Right. That's where you right. knew your friends you were. Know, that's where you knew where everybody was. Yep. So that's how we didn't like. And you <laughs> same thing. You didn't you guys didn't have your we didn't have cell phones. We weren't texting each other it was you're looking for where everybody's at calling house phones. Or just showing up where the where all the bikes were. Yep, <laughs> there's where everybody's at. You yep. know, and it's like. Or you guys would see me splitting wood, and you just ride on by. <laughs> like, oh, maybe we'll, maybe we'll go back to Ian's house in about an hour or two when he's done. I don't want to deal with Mr. Lewis right now. I remember um, when me and my older brother were a year apart, so we go play basketball up the street. Mm-hmm. We're playing basketball up the street all night, you know, having fun. Well, my mother, who was like the commander in chief of the whole outfit, there was six of us. Mm-hmm. So my mother was said, you guys need to get this evergreen tree out of the front yard. So there's this, I don't know, 20 foot evergreen tree. You sit by the front porch and she said, I want it out of here. Dig it up, pull it out of here. Evergreen tree roots aren't so bad. No, they're, they're okay. shallow, but it's really bad when, you want to play basketball? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like, oh, guys. Oh, so yeah. we're playing basketball. It's 11 o'clock at night. We climb up the pole, turn the lights back on, keep playing. We get in. It's about 3 a.m. <laughs> I'm like, there's Evergreen Tree. <laughs> oh, crap. We forgot something. <laughs> yep. And there's Mom <clears throat> standing there with two shovels. She didn't forget. <laughs> nope. She said, I turned the front light on. She said, but you better get that damn tree out of here. <laughs> so, in the midst of pulling this evergreen tree out, we decided that we needed to fight, too. Oh, well, yeah, naturally. So, we were beating the hell out of each other, you know. <laughs> we finally get this thing out. It was about 9 o'clock in the morning. So, we hadn't been asleep at all. So, what's my mom do? She comes out with the basketball. You guys can go play now. <laughs> I'm looking at her like, damn. Can we know. go to bed, mom? <laughs> yep, yep. But see, there's a lesson in an evergreen tree, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? absolutely. Right? Do what you're supposed to do, and you won't have no repercussions. And you know what? It, it took a while. Sure. Because every kid, you know, I'm going to try it. Cause yeah. It, 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 you know, maybe she'll get tired, which I don't think my mom ever got tired. And my stepfather would just look at it. He goes, you guys know you should have done that. And, that. and that's all he would say. Yeah, and you know, because he, he he was like stepfather. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't want to, you know, step on anyone's yeah, toes. Yeah. Or, and yeah, he yeah, was, yeah. but she she yeah. she did all the the Hitler type things. To <laughs> <us>. <laughs> but, but we learned, you know. And when I when I when I wrote that, I I gave it to my mom and said, I'm I I think you need to read this, and you know, she's and I said read this before I publish this thing, and she would call me up and said. I didn't know you did that. <laughs> I didn't know you did that. Yeah, yep. And I didn't know you did that, you know, and I'm like, Oh God, you know, and that's, and that's the thing. Can you, can you, you know, I mean, you're putting everything out yeah, there. You, 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 yeah. Everything, you know, and you're just, you're well, that's why it's so it. good. Cause you yeah. can tell like, it's all real. You couldn't even make some of this stuff up. Yeah. yeah. And I had somebody else, uh, a boss of mine said, I wonder if all that crap in there is the truth. And you know, that, that kind of hurt. Cause we were good friends and I'm yeah, just like, well, I believe every damn word. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I sat there and made it up. But then, then, yeah, there's, then there's guys like Ian, you know, and, and they're like, wow, you know, I believe it. You know, I believe it. And I can talk to you. I mean, within five minutes of talking to you, you know, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yep. I get that. Yep. You, it's, it's hard to, I think it's difficult to have any kind of perspective without doing something, right? Yeah. Without without yeah. having those experiences and, and, and even what we do and what you do with these kids is part of it to me. Um, I, I always think to myself like, well, man, it's, it's the way I learned things was I made mistakes. 
And then I either well, learned myself yeah. or somebody else told me, but some of this stuff is so preventable. Right. And yeah. I think that's yeah, really, yeah, the, yeah. you know, you prevent the major <laughs> yeah, yeah. ones because, because a lot of that in there could have been really bad. <laughs> like yeah. you, you got away with a lot of shit. Yes, I did. <laughs> you yes, know what I mean? I but did. like, yep. if you can learn those major lessons yep. and then do the minor ones on your own, yeah, it's all good. Right. Yeah, like yeah. that, that you can learn your own lessons, but maybe stay away from yeah, you know, well, half, of, half of the time, what I, what, I, what I usually tell kids and stuff like that is, um, you know, you can do something that's going to follow you for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why, but when we went to the power plant and I went to get this job at the power plant, I had a clean record. <laughs> and I've, I've never been arrested <laughs> and, and, and it's just like, just like, just like you said, and I would be, I would be right in the midst of things right there, man. I remember a cop just looking me square in the eye and go get lost mm-hmm. after, okay. he, after he busted my buddy with a pound of weed and we were both in the same, he was the driver yeah. and he just looked at me and said, what are you doing? Isn't that amazing how the world and works? I, I'm like, I'm, a, I'm with him and he's like, get lost. And my buddy looked at me and he said, just walk, man. He said, he's giving you the break of your life, you know, yeah. and, and it's true. And if you go, and if you go back to that, 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 um, power plant, see, they do this intense background investigation, mm-hmm. you know, I had, I had nothing. And see, I think that story, that example is why, however many years later you wrote that book. Yes, because you were fortunate enough to see yourself in not the best situations, but then yeah. understand that, hey, I got a break. Yeah, not everyone gets. Not a everybody break. gets that. Every, everybody's a moment away from a right. life change. Yes, yeah, right. I mean, I mean, yeah. think how about many times? That. How many times have you? Should we have, been in exactly so just, much just trouble? Just doing stupid things that kids do. Yep. yep, and not everybody's fortunate to be able to get away with it. And and the tough part is realizing it. Like some people like they get away and they're like, okay, well I'll just keep doing it. Right, or right. you learn your lesson <laughs> and say, I'm never doing that again. Right. I mean, it's, you know, in, in, well, in, in, and Tim in didn't there, learn I, the first yeah. time. <laughs> 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 no, no, exactly. Exactly. exactly dude. I'm From what I read exactly. there. But, but eventually yeah. though, we do get it right. Yeah, no, like, yeah. Cause we didn't learn the first time no. either. I mean, I got in trouble for the same shit over and over again. It seemed like Absolutely. until dad found out, then I always learned the first time. Yeah. I can honestly say that. When dad found out and I got in trouble with dad. Well, that's what, when that happens, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, just like you said, you know, it took a long mm-hmm. time for, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wise up, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, it, it wasn't easy. So, and, and you know, you, just, like, just like Ian said, you can make these little mistakes, mm-hmm. you know. You should make yeah. little mistakes. Yeah. And you're, and you you're, you're, it's, going, it's you're going to. Yeah. You're, going, you're going to make these mistakes. But, you know, where do you go from there? Yeah, what do, what do you take yeah. from that? Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, and you you got to try to make the right decisions. And that, as a parent, as a father, you need to make sure that your kids realize that. Um, we could all go down a dark road. You know, you could go with the wrong crowd. You know, you never know what kind of kids your friends, like, kids your friends, friends your, your kids, kids are going to hang out yeah. with. Yep. And, you know what I mean? Like, yep. if you could change that. Um, I, I was in a situation as a, a young kid, like, where I could have gone one way. But I happened to decide to do something else, hang out with different people. You know, I mean, like, and, that, and that's sure. tough. I mean, and hopefully your child could realize that and make the right decision. Well, and that's the tough thing about being a father, right? Like, we know this. We know all this stuff, right? Yeah. And, and, and we're sitting here and explaining how it's good and it's okay to make the little mistakes. And, and so I think the hard part, at least stuff in my head, is, okay, how do I teach the major lessons Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and get them to understand, but then allow them to make the little mistakes. Right. Without being, our kids are young. So, yeah, but it's, it, but to look for, that's what's coming. Like I got to figure out how, and, and I'll go back to this again with this, what we have here, we could find that advice from talking to someone like Tim, um, from other parents that have been there, um, who are going through it to try to get ideas of what to do because, 
without a little bit of help, I mean, <laughs> it's hard, it's hard you, to figure you out know, what you want to do. I mean, and, and here's the thing too. Um, before I used to go out, when I started getting into teenage years and getting into trouble and stuff, your 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 parents will give you a conscience before you leave. <laughs> you know, sure, oh, yeah, they'll say something like, you know, uh, well, you see something going on, you know, and you know who your buddies are. And yeah, yeah. You guys all hanging together and you're doing things, you know, and and and. Just for just for an example, I didn't put this in the book, but um, I went to a party one night. I happened to be about seventeen years old. The big party. These guys are smoking. They're drinking. We're you know there's there's girls, mm-hmm. and there sits a guy in the corner, and he has this gun, and he's clicking it back and forth, and he's shooting a trigger, and and I'm looking, and I'm like, I'm leaving. Yeah. And just like and just like that, I'm leaving. And my buddies were like, Come on, man, you know, come on, man, come on, man. What are you talking about? I said, No, nah, man. I said, I'm I'm leaving. I said, dude's got that gun over. He go, He don't have no bullets. He de- he doesn't have any bullets, man. He's it's it's cool, man, you know. And I'm like, Nope. I said, I ain't sitting in the room with no gun. I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. I'm walking down the street. Here comes six cup cars up the street. Boom, 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 boom. Just I'm like, what the hell? Well, with that unloaded gun, that guy killed his best friend that night. Yeah. I guess somehow it got loaded, you know? And, and, and somehow, I don't know, by the grace of God, I left. And then my buddies were telling me, man, you should have seen out there. I didn't want to see that. Yeah, I don't want, want to be there for that. He shot his buddy in the head and killed him. His, his best friend, grow-up friend. Now you see, and you see things like that, and just like Ian said, but was I was I smart enough to to stay away from things like that? No, I just kept doing things, kept doing things until finally it hits home, mm-hmm. and you have a mental breakdown. And I, I mean, I actually just just like I can't do this no more. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that's, and those are some of the and, and, and some of the things you have to just learn. And, and that's a, that's for for a kid yeah. to be in a situation like that, like. You're like, hey, I'm I'm out. Yep. That's that's tough yeah. because when you have your friends that are like, like you said, they're like, hey, come on, man, it's cool. Like well, that's, that's tough to to get yourself away from a situation like that. Where you felt you felt uncomfortable, and you knew yep. somewhere and, deep down and I was that about to like, s- deep down that there's something was gonna happen or something was wrong there. Yep. And it's tough for kids to make that decision. Well, especially on your own, yeah, right? right? Like, right. yeah, like, absolutely. Now I, I always I always attribute back to the reason that me and Steve and and we have a, like we have this core group of friends. That we've been friends since we were six, seven years old. And we've always, I mean, to this day, stay together and we hang out all the right. time and everything. Mm-hmm. And we were so fortunate that when, I mean, because we were in situations, go to house parties and stuff like that in high yeah, school yeah. and stuff like that. And and we would know, we we're like, you know what, let's go. Let's yeah. bounce. Like, yeah. this isn't. Well, where you, we you need know, to be, and it's knew, so much easier to do that when you're in a group. Yeah, absolutely. If you if you, in a group situation, yeah. But to do like, it on your own, on your like, own with, man, with that's your a hard thing to do when you're 17 absolutely. years old. Well, so you got you got 10 guys. You know, we rode together in the same. You know, in the cars mm-hmm. and stuff like that. We drove up there, and you know, we're we're drinking and smoking along the way and everything like that. But you know, when you get there, just you get just, that feeling. It, yeah, it, it, just, it, it just it just wasn't right. But see, yeah. you're the type of person too that trusts your gut and. I mean, and, and honestly, I look at some of the stuff that, like, like I said, my dad always used to pound leadership into my head. Like, right, right. So, like, my dad used to tell me, um, and I don't know how young, but I remember certainly in high school, I'd leave the house, and you know, you'd say your parents give you a conscious, right. conscience. Yep. They give you a my conscience. dad always used to say, yep. be a leader. Yeah. And, and, like, when I was a kid, I was like, what the, it's a yeah. corny thing to say or whatever. <laughs> I tell it to my son every day before he goes to school. Yeah. Be a leader today. And, like, he doesn't get what that means now. And he probably won't get it for a long, long time. But if that sticks with him, because it only takes one. If you've got a good group of friends, or, or it doesn't even have to be a really good group of friends, but if there's somebody that takes the lead and says, hey, this isn't a good situation, yeah. hopefully, yeah. you yeah. know, who knows? And, and, and the worst thing about that night was I get there, and there's this girl and this is girl that I wanted to be with forever, you know, and she's there and she had a couple drinks and she was loose and she walked right up to me, put her arms around me and said, Hey man, you know, let's have a good time. You know? And I'm like, mm-hmm. <sighs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, man, you know, 
And I'm and all the while while I'm walking down the street, I'm like, I should just go back. <laughs> yep. Me and her, we could have had some fun, you know. Yeah. And I'm yeah. and I'm thinking, nah. I said, I got I gotta go. I gotta go. And maybe maybe it's the conscience of my stepfather being a cop mm-hmm. that, that that you know that does something to and you. And, and, and I remember I made a lot of yep. lot of I mean, listen, I made some bad decisions too, but my dad was a cop. And so I there was a lot of things where I was like, look. <laughs> I can't yeah. do this. Yeah. I can't we be in this situation. We also had a, a friend in the group that was always very cautious and worried about everybody. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that was me. I was always he the, was. Were you? Oh, the, yeah. The he still is. The, he the still worried is. about everybody. I was. I was the type of person that was like, hey, when everybody was doing something, they leave drink. Like if somebody was drinking or something, like make sure you call me when you get home. I, yep. I was making sure everybody was He's home still that safe way. before I could go to bed. We were just in <laughs> Arizona, and like we're out. You know, it's. I don't know, one o'clock in the morning, we're at the bars having a good time and all that kind of stuff. And, and there's Steve just like always making sure he knows where everyone is. Like <laughs> Keep everybody together. <laughs> that one guy with the common sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Keep, the, keep it tight perimeter guys. That guy, that guy needs to write the book. He needs <laughs> yeah, to right, write the right. book. Yeah. 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 On, on, on the, the way that things, you know, how you, how you reason with, okay, it's time to leave. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. It's, yeah. now yeah. Before things get out of hand yep. or something. So, all right, let's change gears a little bit, Tim. Tell us about, so you were recent. I know you're a part of, you're on the board. Um, you guys just did this event, uh, Soup for the Soul. Yep. And uh, unfortunately, we had a different event the same exact night. That was a leap year, leap day night, you know? Yeah. Yep. And um, so we couldn't make it, but it it looked like an awesome time. Yes, it did. It's, it's crazy. Here, my, my buddy is a channel eight uh, or Fox eight um, cameraman, but his dad made this thing and it's, it's sold out for seven years. There's 300 people and they're just now going to expand it. The soup for the soul. Mm-hmm. And actually what this is, it says um, strength in our students is what soup for the soul was made for. Okay. Okay. So what happened is here, my, my job at this place was to, escort all the celebrities of course i took pictures oh absolutely <laughs> you know, you know you I, talk, pictures. I, I talked to a whole bunch of guys i talked to josh cribs and his wife and kenny crumpton wayne dawson that's awesome Chris, christy cable christy cable is a riot man <laughs> such fun they have a have a good time and what you do is you have these little dixie cups and there's like soup everywhere they had barbecue soup um freaking uh lobster bisque you know, not not anything traditional, just all kinds of crazy stuff. And um, at my table, uh, Senator for Ohio, Senator Kenny Yuko, he mm-hmm. was there, mm-hmm. and he was my guest because we're friends. And just a whole bunch of fun, loving, doing everything. You can buy stuff, you can do stuff, and they're giving away prizes and stuff like that. And next year, the Talking Dads are going to be there. Yes, sir. Hell yeah. Yep, because. This was something that they should have done. Yeah. But we, yeah. we, we, and, and all the proceeds that they do, this is goes to strengthening our students. I was going to say that yeah. the, the yeah. whole thing yeah. benefits kids. And, and yeah, and that's what it's about. And I don't know if you guys ever been down to um, drive down 20 into East Cleveland as of recently. Mm. Uh, down 20. No, not, not in a while. I, I, I hadn't, I hadn't done it in a long time. So I drove down 20 into East Cleveland. And you know what? I literally stopped at a stoplight and had tears in my eyes because there's nothing. Yeah. And that's the kids that we're trying to help. They're, they're, on, on 20, you know, there should be businesses booming. Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, there should be barber shops, you know, even, even um, bars, whatever. Uh, absolutely nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. And I'm just like, holy crap. What happened? See, because when I was growing up, it was a thriving metropolis down there. Yeah. You see people. There's no people. I mean, it, it just, it, it's a shocker. But these are, this is the environment that these kids come from, and they have to live like that. So that's what this, this guy did. He's strengthening our students. He's giving these kids a chance. I think they gave out three scholarships last year, and they're building on this, and this is why they want to do it. I think Suit for the Soul is going to get bigger. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yep. Yeah, we'd love to be yep. a part of that next year. I mean, that oh. would be 
Well, when we do it, we're going to have some fun. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. <laughs> we are going to have some fun. That's good. Yeah. I, that, I think uh, on my watch that day, um, we got there at 11. It started at 2 and it ended at 6. But on my Fitbit, I clocked in eight miles. <laughs> yeah. Just running around, running around. And that's fun, man. If, 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 and if you get to a chance to interact with these people that you see on TV all the time and you're thinking that they're so, you know, untouchable. You know what? They are such down to earth, good people. Yeah. And I could say good God fearing people, man. They are so great. And they're entered such a riot. Yeah. You know, it's good. Kenny Crumpton is so crazy too. And, <laughs> and, and, and these are the things, you know, I, I see, which, which we're going to do it is talking dads being in there to promote talking dads, because there's not, there's, there's not an outfit like this. I've been I've been looking on the internet and stuff like that, and I can't I can't find it anywhere where there's where there's remotely anything like this where dads interact. I see mom all the time, mm-hmm. but dads, and this is actually you know like in the black community, sometimes dad is like non-existent, right? And this promotes dad, so we got to promote dad. We got We got to all Love come it. together. Yep. And it doesn't matter, you know, just like I said, black community, but black or white or other or anything, man, you, you know, you have to be there. I think the yeah. worst thing that could ever happen to a guy is not being there with your kids, like divorce, mm-hmm. not being able to get up in the morning and see that kid, you know, go off to school or do imagine. something like that. Yeah. 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 I told one of my friends when he was, when he was like, he was in the middle of this should I get a divorce? Should I get a divorce? We're working side by side. He's crying every night and he's asking me, should I get a divorce? I said, let me tell you something, man. I said, you have a boy, your son. I said, you know what's really killer? I mean, absolutely. I said, I said, this will damn near put you in the ground. I said, when that boy's growing up and you pull up for your time with him and there's another guy standing there playing ball with him Ooh. Yep. yeah and then it, it i said that will hit you so freaking hard man i said you know what i said you go home and i said you tell that woman that you love her i said you guys work that shit out because yeah. that's what that kid needs and you know what that kid he don't want to be there playing ball with that kid with that guy he dad. wants to be his dad yeah. that's his dad yeah and, and daughters daughters are even worse Daughters, man, daughters are all about dad. No matter what my dad did, my sister was to this day, and my dad passed away. My real, my, my real father, mm-hmm. the one, my father that left us at 11, to this day, my sister loves that guy. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> no matter what. Yeah. So you, you, you pull up and you watch, you, you pull up in your, what used to be your driveway and you watch that guy with your seven or eight year old teaching him how to play ball. How do you feel? Yeah. Right. Right between the eyes, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can't even imagine. Yep. Yep. (sighs) (laughs) That's, that's heavy, man. I know, I know, I know, I know, but just, just, just think about it. And, and, you know, at one point in time, you know, and this, and, to, to promote family, you know, at one point in time, you know, you love this woman. Okay. So why not make it happen? You know, iron out your differences. I know some things that just, it, some things I, I heard one tonight, you know, I, it, it can't be forgiven, you know? Yeah. There's, but there's damn, situations, but you know, that, that that's, I mean, that's hard. It's hard. It's tough. And then he, I'm, go ahead. <laughs> So being in the business that I'm in, I see, I work with so many families, right? Um, I think what you're saying is super important. And, and I think the, the, the real lesson out of that is if, if divorce is an option or split is an option or whatever, just make sure you spend you've done time. what you could, yep. right? Because it can't always work out. But it then what I think is almost more important is if that is the best option, if you and your your spouse or whatever decide that that is the best option, 
there has to be a plan. There has to be um, an understanding of how, number one, understanding what, what's going to happen with your kids. Yeah. And then number two, what do we do to make sure that everything is still about them and that we do whatever we can? It's because amazing. there's so many situations that I can personally point to where shit, I mean, the, a, a, a split family might have more, those kids might get more out of it than some families that stay together for the wrong reasons. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. It's a tough one. Yeah, I mean, it's very hard. But, you know, and, and then again, you know, there's, a, I see my mother get totally abused, man, when I was a kid. My, 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 my real father push my mother out of a glass window onto a porch. And my grandparents live next door to us. And my, my grandfather, which, which is in that book to give it away, but I'm going to give it away. I don't care. I don't care. My grandfather came over and he had a pistol in my dad's face. And he said, the only reason why you don't go to hell tonight is because of these kids. And there was four of us then. Mm -hmm. And my dad took he, the boys had a three boys had a, um, had a, had a bedroom downstairs and my sister was upstairs. So my dad put them, my sister up in her room. And then he came downstairs and I was just standing in the corner, just staring at him real mad, you know, cause my mom's back was all cut up. She had to go to the hospital. It was terrible. And he put my older brother and my younger brother to bed. My younger brother didn't really know what's going on. So he looks at me and he goes, what's the matter with you? He goes, what are you looking at? So being me, I said, nothing. I'm looking at nothing. So he used to have this brush and it said made in Japan. And I'll never forget that. I always see, whenever I see made in Japan, I know that was a like good ass kicking. So he said, step over here and I'm going to show you what it's about. Okay. So I stepped over there and he started smacking me with this brush. And I'm just standing there as an 11 year old kid. I ain't batting an eye. And he says, okay, you're a man. He goes, you got something to say for yourself? I said, yes, I do. And he said, well, what's that? I said, when I get big, you better be gone. And he was. But that, that's, that's, you know. Yeah. And, and, and I, I understand that. But, you know, at all costs, I would, I would try to stay with my kids, man. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and growing up, I had some real influential celebrity type people around me. My great uncle was Luke Easter. He played for the Cleveland Indians in 1954 and the Negro Leagues. He would take us to ball games. That's cool. And I would sit on his lap. And Paul Warfield and his wife used to come over our house. Really? Yes. All, wow. all the time. That's awesome. And the kids from the neighborhood would run over and stuff like yeah. that. And then, like, for my, we had a, um, the homecoming. Mm -hmm. they, you know where the parents walk the kids sure. out? Sure. Well, my mom was a nurse. And... She couldn't be there. And I'm back there in the back of the line with the rest of the kids that didn't have no parents. And we're all back there. We got our heads put down like this, and we're, you know, getting ready to walk out. And my stepfather, he, um, he showed up in his uniform, in his Cleveland policeman uniform, and put his arm around me and walked out on that field with me. And... To top it all off, I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden I see this great big crowd. It was a sold out crowd in Wycliffe. I see these people, and then there's Paul Warfield walking down there because Paul Warfield wanted to see me play, and I did not start, <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't that great. But you know, he came to see me play, mm -hmm. and they had him up there, and he made they made an announcement about some radio station that he had been there for. He said, "Oh no." He said, I'm not here for any radio station. He said, I come to see my friend Tim Lowe play football. And my coach cool. looked up in that press box, and then he looked at me, and he goes, get your ass out of here. Why are you sitting here, and Paul Warfield has come to see you play? That's pretty cool. Yep. That's awesome. And then he came down to the bench, and they let him walk over, yeah. and he sat down on the bench with me. But – that's that's you know that's awesome that's amazing it's it, 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 it's crazy the way things happen yeah and these people that would come and help and when we were eating nothing Paul Warfield came over our house 
and gave us this gigantic, I'm going to say his number was 42, and I'm going to mm-hmm. say it was a 42-pound turkey, <laughs> which is, it, right, right, right. I, I remember it that way. Sure. And I'm going I'm to keep it that way, and I don't care if you guys believe me or not. <laughs> but he also, my mother would not, being who she was, accept any money. And I remember that day they gave us $1,000. You know, we were eating church stuff, you know, whatever. Yeah. And, and we weren't going to have a Thanksgiving. Yeah. And that's what it turned out to be. To, that, to this day, my, my mother lives out here, and Beverly and Paul Warfield will go over their house. That's amazing. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. That's pretty cool. And, 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 you know, I know every kid didn't live that way. And my uncle, as far as he was concerned, he got shot and killed in uh, Euclid. When two guys tried to rob him, he worked for TRW. He was cashing some checks for them. But um, we used to go to the ball game. And he used to sit there where the ball would come down the pipe. And he would sit there. And my my uncle was a big man, maybe six foot five, six foot six, about 330 pounds at the time. Old guy. And everybody knew him. Luke would talk to everybody. But I would yell, Uncle Luke, as loud as I could. My grandfather would laugh because you know where my seat was? He said, come here, boy. And he put his arm around me and he'd tell me, that ball's going to do this. That ball's going to do that. And then here comes Usher. And he'd yell, Luke, I can't have all these kids around here. I can't have all that. He goes, you know, people pay for these seats. And he, he stood up, and he reached in his pocket, and he said, listen. He goes, I built this damn ballpark. I'll tell you what. He goes, go get us some popcorn and some pop, and we're going to talk about it later. <laughs> Boom, just like that. And he, he would do things like that. And everybody loved him. He, um, but he... See- it, it, it's just so crazy, all that kind of stuff. Like, I love talking to you about this kind of stuff because, you know, you read your book and you see all this, like, crazy stuff. And, and and not that it paints a different picture, but because once you get to the end, you kind of understand why you're a positive person and everything like that. But, like, these are some of the stories that make sense, right? Because for, for all the messed up stuff, for all the mistakes that you made and the, the crew that you were hanging around with and the shit that you guys got into, you had some positive influences in your, in, in your life Yeah, that clearly you remember. Oh yeah. And that's, yeah. what's amazing. And, and, and I think the key thing to take away from that is what are you going to choose to model your own behavior after? Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And it takes us a while to get there. Like we said, we make some mistakes along the way and everything, but like, Looking at you now, I mean, that's it's well, it's yeah, I mean, very you, you apparent. Can, you can to have me. people, like you said, like the influences in your life, or they tell you to do things. And as a child, as a kid, you 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 don't always take that advice. Well, and you, you could be a I mean? super like, or, or or not even super, but you could be not as positive a person or negative person, and not even look at those experiences and say, wow, how amazing is that? Yeah, that somebody yeah. did this for me. But then yeah. I think eventually you, it, it hits you and you're like, wow. And, and, and well, you're able to change and do those things and I, take I think, it for what it is. I think the major thing that happened to me in my life was it took a major, um, I took a major hit when one of my friends got killed in a car accident. That was, that was the ultimate changing point of my sure. life that just it just absolutely floored me yeah and I stayed on a hill for three days and somebody offers me some weed you know and said hey you know this will make it all right well the third day after I s- stood up decided hey you know I can't I can't do this no more yeah. so I took that weed and put it in the wind and uh, I never looked back I just like just kept going from there and just Kept trying to better my life and stuff. It's good, man. I yeah, appreciate it was, that. It was really, it was really crazy. But you, and and you know, that's what I try to tell everybody. You know, it it, it doesn't have to take this major incident. Make the change, man. Mm-hmm. You and and these guys are talking to me about coming and speaking at, um, you know, like schools or drug houses or churches or things like that. But you know what? I can't change nobody. You got to change. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. And once you once you make the decision, maybe I can help you. Yeah, but the nice thing, there. I mean, give yourself some credit. The nice thing is that you've gone through some things in your life that you can be relatable. And again, I'll go back to you being authentic, because that's a that's a rare thing 
especially for somebody that that speaks sometimes that's a that's a you, you got you're not you getting put, false yeah. words you know what i mean like you're not getting uh you know an empty cup well, when, there's, when there's you people, talk to tim there's you know? people that can read you you know sure mm. everyone i can. mean i mean people can see i had a girl put her head down in a class and tell me hey, uh i don't want to listen to your crap man okay i said that's fine i said i'll tell you what i said for the whole week because i had to do this thing at the school for a whole week i said i'll tell you what i said give me three minutes i said if you don't like what you what you hear i said you can put your head down the whole damn week i don't care i said but i said just listen. Yeah, I said you might you might learn something. She said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know." <laughs> so, she put her head down anyway. And as I was telling her about things that happened in my life, she picked her head up. And she's looking at me kind of weird. And it because and and I think what what happened was <laughs> what what really happened is the room was so quiet. And as I'm telling them some things I um, talking about my buddy dying in a car accident. I took my glasses off. I walked over to the door. I had tears in my eyes and I said, man, how can I tell this damn story to these kids? And I got tears in my freaking eyes. You know, I said, what the hell? How can you know? And I'm thinking to myself, God, what an idiot. And then I turned around and she stood up and she goes, man, you're for real. And I said, what do you think? I was just bullshitting about everything. And she goes, well, everybody else does. Mm -hmm. She said, so why, can't, why are you giving it to me straight? I said, because I don't want to see nothing happen to you. And she goes, well, what's it to you when it happens to me? And, I, and she said, all you are, she goes, you, you wrote this damn book that you want us to read. And she said, you think, you think you're, you're cool or something? I said, I don't. I don't. I said, I just want you to understand that there's some things that's going to happen in your life and I said, I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do. I'm just trying to tell you what happened to me. Mm -hmm. And I said, and if you can relate to that. And as time went on that week, she, uh, she like led the class and the discussion and everything. And she was like, yeah, damn, that's cool. You know, damn. And that's where, that's where you want to go. You know, when you see, when you see something like that, you know, like somebody don't, it's just totally off point because they're sick of listening to bull crap. And that's that's why I post every day when I when I put something like real life hero. Mm -hmm. It's not about a celebrity. It's just it's about people yeah. doing positive things. And we could write about all the bull crap that happens in the world. And some of the stuff is I, I'm honestly is really freaking comical. Oh, yeah. But it's and then some of the stuff is really bad. But just like Steve said, you promote that bad stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We we we, we, we see enough of it. We, we really do. And I, I hate seeing it. I, I really do. It's yeah. it's sickening. Yeah. Yep. It's nice to see positive. Keep posting yeah. them real life heroes. I love yeah, we that. We do appreciate that. Yep. yep. So as a with your kids, um, I'd like to ask, I have two boys, Ian has a boy and a girl. So your son decided that he was gonna go to Georgia. He was yep. at a, up and he was gonna move out of state, pretty far from you. Yep. Tell me, tell us driving dropping your son off to leave him on his own <laughs> to go to college well, in Georgia. We all went up there and um, it's because I, I, I'm just thinking about like how that would be. It's a sick, <laughs> it's, it's just so it's, it's, it's such a sickening feeling. Yeah. And you know, you know, you, you've been with this kid all your life and you drop him off in this college and you see you, it's a, there's a big, like, it wasn't a dorm. It was more or less like a great big uh, apartment complex where they stayed, high rise type thing. Moved all of his stuff in, you know. And there's this little room, and <laughs> driving, you you're you're standing there. He's standing there, and you're driving away, and he's standing in a parking lot. And I keep looking through the rearview mirror, and I looked at him before I left. And I'm looking in the rearview mirror, and I'm thinking to myself, God can I do this? I'm just, I'm, I'm, and you know, he's, he's, he's out there. Yeah. There's nobody he knows. He went to Georgia and I'm like, shit, man, you know, and my wife, she's hysterical. And for a moment there in the car, let me use this expression. 
it was so quiet you can hear an ant piss on cotton <laughs> for a long time. Okay. Yep, yep. And, and you're thinking about you you're, you're thinking about ball games. You're thinking about really yeah riding, and you're thinking you're thinking about all the stuff. You're thinking about his schooling, and you're thinking about damn, you know. And it just it just it's an overwhelming feeling, and you it just there's nothing like it. Until, yeah. until you drop your daughter off. <laughs> <laughs> she was then, is yeah. she a little more local though for for college. Though? She's she's yeah. she's Columbus, but yeah, you still know. I mean but still yeah. I mean, it's and not you're not she's not she's not home with you. You're right, you're, right. you're you're taking your kid and you're leaving them to yep. live as an adult. It's just leaving them, they're not there to guide them, and right. you know, hoping. Oh man, that's just a <laughs> a crazy feeling. And, and, and you know, every every now and then, you know, you you get a call from him, you know, and. It, it, he, he talks to my wife more than he talks to me. Sure. That's, mm-hmm. what, that's but, what you know, we do. But, but, if he, but if he has a problem, problem, mm-hmm. he'll talk to me. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, like um, just recently, it was a couple months ago, but he's driving and he's talking to me. And so while he's talking to me, I hear this boom. I'm like, what the hell was that? He goes, Dad, somebody just hit my car. <laughs> And I don't know if you've ever been to Georgia. They got like eight lanes. And yeah. They, yeah. They, oh, it's they insane. Need, they need 30 lanes. Yeah. So he goes, I'll call you right back. I'm so he, I said, call the cops. So he called the cops. He said, the guy's screaming and yelling at him. Then in his car, not real bad, but the guy's screaming and yelling at him. And it's actually the guy's fault. And then the guy just took off. <sighs> they never found him or anything. Yeah, there, but you know, yeah. but I'm like, man, you know, and, you know, you just can't you just can't get up and go to him. Yeah. You know. And and maybe my daughter living in Columbus is a little bit closer that if she had a problem that she needed yeah. me, I I would I would go in the middle of the night just to get there. But my son <laughs> it would take it would take some doing. Yeah. And my son my son moved into um when he uh graduated from college, he was moving. So he had all of his stuff in an open truck U-Haul type thing, like. And he went to this apartment, and in Georgia, there are roaches. He so yeah, he that's opened, the south, yeah, yeah, and he opened up the the door, and he said the walls were crawling, man. Uh, and he, they, and what they do in Georgia is they fumigate the place and everything, and they, they keep you know, but they didn't do it this time. So it's raining, and as he's got all of his stuff, and he's in a truck, and the rain is going all over his stuff, and we told him to get some plastic, and he says, for the first time in my life, I'm homeless. <laughs> my wife was almost on the floor. Yeah. And then you're, you're reaching into your pocket, and you know what? You don't even realize it. It, it doesn't matter the amount of money you shell out to get him back into where he needs to be. Yeah. Oh, it, sure. took, it, it took three days and three days he was in a nice place. But in the meantime, he has all of his worldly goods, his speakers and stuff. He still talks about it. Just raining on it. Just pouring it rain for like five days there. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And naturally, and he has to put his stuff in a parking lot and go into this hotel and stay. And his stuff is out there. So it was there for the taking, but nobody really took it. And then he went there. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, that's about a three day non sleep for me. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And my, and my wife is just, there's, there's no calm in her. Yeah. yeah. And 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 it's impossible because that, you know, it, it was, it was so crazy, but those, those are the things that, that, you know, that experience that helped him grow as a man. Oh, hundred oh, percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and he took care of it, you know, and and those are the things that you guys you, you're going to be facing a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, you know? and it's just going to come at you, and you're going to say, "Nobody told me about this." Yeah, <laughs> nobody told me about that. You no know, preparing for. That's it. why we're doing yeah. the show, man. Yeah. We're trying to get it all out, so yeah. we're prepared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you're right. I mean, you never know any situation that. Yeah. You, just, you, you just gotta. You just gotta. If you could. If you can. And for some reason, I don't know. My wife says I never worry about a damn thing, which is false. But I, I seriously, I just take a look. I take I take a step back 
and and here's Tim's philosophy. If you're if you're into if you're into this, something's been done. What can I do about it? I've done everything that I can do. I've exhausted all my resources and what happened? What can I do to make it right? How can I go forward in this situation and drop all the bad and try to do what I can do? Mm-hmm. No matter what it is, there's there. And you just, yeah. you just, you just have to say, honestly, what else is there? It. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you just, what can you do? Right. Do everything that you can do. And when it's done the hell with it, do something. Yeah. yeah. That's it. And it, and it's, that's bottom line. And that's what I tell my kid all the time too. Do what you can do about it. If you need me, I'll help you. But do what you can do. And if you've done everything that you can do to rectify the situation, then fine. But if you can't, move on, man. Move yeah. On. Move right. on. Yeah. Move right. on. Yep. Let it go. It's good advice. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's Speaking hard. of advice, uh, one of the I mean, we do a couple different things like we like to hit, but one of them is a dad hack. Uh, the other one we do is proud dad moment. And right. man, talk to you for five minutes and I get like 32 <laughs> dad, proud dad moments out of you. So, <laughs> And then you make me think of like 32 proud dad Seriously, moments for myself. Yeah, yeah. When, you, when you're talking, I'm sitting there like, wow, I think about this. And I can say this, I can say this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it all comes. But but one of the things that we like to do is dad hacks. And, and, and really what that is, is, um, you know, that for the new dad is really what we like to have these for. Okay. It's something that we've learned along our journey and, and not, not so much philosophy, but something concrete that says, Hey man, this is how you do this. You know, like we, we've come up with some, Steve's got a good one about putting pants on like a, uh, on an <laughs> infant, you know, cause there's a right way and a wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> and try I can to, attest to that because to I've tried it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so something that's, kind of simple that that you can say really helped you and and if i know you like i think i know you it's gonna be deeper than i think that, <laughs> than than we're used to and that's okay too um but yeah something you know just a dad hack hack the system help a dude out <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can give you a recent oh all right, all right. All right. i like all right. that all right dad hack with my daughter my daughter's going through all these things and she has to lose weight and she's going through things with her job. But, and you have to sit there and you listen to this stuff. And what you want to do is go down there and beat the hell out of somebody. <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously. Sure. And so, you know, but um, we've put together, me and her, a, a diet program and my wife is following it and all of us are following it. But it's, it's just, you know, something that you have to do as a family. Because you're talking about food and you're talking about job. You know, my daughter's, she just, before she goes to work, she's just like, I, I, I can't deal with this anymore. Mm-hmm. So what do you do? You make her tough it out. And she toughs it out. And mm-hmm. she's going to get another job somewhere. But, you know, me and my daughter have a lot of time together. And I've been trying to convince her to get on this elliptical downstairs in our basement. She's not going to run. So I go running, I go working out, stuff like that. And today happened to be like the most amazing thing. She told me she was on the tread on the um, elliptical for 15 minutes today. And to me, that's an accomplishment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For all the time that she said that she wasn't going to get on it. She, she did it. And see, if you be persistent and, and, and do the things that you need to do, your kid eventually is going to listen and listen to reason. And Man, that's so refreshing to hear. <laughs> I feel like I tell my kid, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it comes, it comes, yeah. Yeah. but you know, you have to let them learn a little bit, you know, and my daughter lost like 10, 12 pounds right off the bat, which she was ecstatic. And I said, well, I know how you can enhance that. I said, cause it's going to slow down, which it did for me too. Mm-hmm. And I said, if you just get on that elliptical, you'll see, I'm not getting on it, man. I'm not getting on it. And today she told me. And that 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 made me just like whew, just blew Persistency. Me away. Yep. Yeah. And you keep you keep at it as a parent, you know, and you, you know and you have to keep throwing examples out there, you know. And I keep telling her I just 
I know what working out can do. And I, and I, I keep telling her because things are so bad at work and literally to bring her in tears. My daughter's never cussed in her entire life and she <laughs> cussed the other night <laughs> and she's telling me about this stuff. But to get that, to get that one thing and they, they finally get it mm-hmm. makes you feel like you've accomplished something too. Yeah. And, and it, when you take your kid as, as, as small kids too, and I know Steve, you got you got two battling boys. I know what goes on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's oh, yeah. always this 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 uh, this growing testosterone for these little oh, these yeah. little guys, and they'll battle each other. Yeah, yeah. And, and and you know, if if you persist into doing what you're doing, you're gonna you're gonna mold these guys into being something yeah. that's really terrific. And and that's the way that you do. And your son and your daughter. You know, as a man, and I know you do this, Ian. I know you do it. I, I, I have, I have, I, I will, I will bet my life that you do this. You tell your son that nobody bothers his sister. Yeah, I do. Yep. And and I don't care how young. Nobody, nobody messes with your sister. Yeah. I don't. I don't care. It just. It don't make. So you're right. I do say that all the time, and you know, especially like looking at my son. The reality is, I think she's going to be protecting him sometimes. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it happens. Too. She's a little. Oof, she's got some fire in her. Uh, so somehow, you just took a dad hack, added in a proud dad moment, yeah. and then like <laughs> I would diagnosed on who him. we are. <laughs> That's amazing. See, why don't you give him yeah, that I was button? Say, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got so. Yeah. My man. Yeah, yeah, seriously though, man. I mean, you just I would expect nothing less of you, Tim. I mean, that's that's awesome. It's fantastic. It's, it, there's some crazy stuff that goes on, man. It just and you know you wouldn't believe it. I tell you, I did. I tell you, a sister, uh, a real sister. This is me and my sister were real tight growing up. We're not now, but that that's another story. Sure. But we worked at Ponderosa together. So there's this guy. He would come in with this turban. And I was, I was dishing and I was cooking and stuff, you know. And my sister was a waitress. Nice looking waitress. So, of course, she's my sister. I'm going to say that. But <laughs> all of a sudden, we're working at this Ponderosa. And this guy, he has a turban on. And he would eat a steak with his hands all the time. And so, my sister comes running back while I'm dishing. And I'm like, she's screaming and crying. I'm like, what the hell is the matter with you? She goes, that weird guy, that weird guy grabbed my ass out there. He grabbed my ass. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. Mm. So I'm this, I'm this big weightlifting kid, you know, and working out all the time and eating steak for three years because that's where I work in the pound of roast. <laughs> I'm not, not going to eat anything but damn steak and yeah, potatoes. Yeah. So you know those trays that you have that you put your food on? Oh, oh yeah. 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 To these trays, and I took like 50 of them out there, put them in the bin, and I see this guy, and he's sitting in this corner booth. And I took this tray, and I shoved it in his throat, and I punched him in his face. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just beating the hell out of him. I'm like 16 years old. I'm beating the hell out of him, you know. And then, I'm, and then I get done with him. He's over there, and he's like, oh, you know. And he's laying in the corner. <laughs> I go back in, and I'm washing the dishes. And my manager was about four foot three. He comes in there. His name was Mr. Armini. He goes, he goes, hey, Tim. He goes, come here, man. He goes, what the hell just happened? <laughs> and I go, what are you talking about? And I'm acting like everything, like nothing yeah. went on. You know, I'm, I'm a good, I, you know, I'm just washing dishes, man. So he goes, did you just beat the hell out of that guy with that turban? He said, he's all messed up over there. He said, you broke his nose or something, man. He said, you shoved that tray in his throat. And I'm like, yeah. And then he said, what's the deal? I said, nobody touches my sister. <laughs> and so then I take the trash out the dudes like he's like ecstatic and he goes well I don't know what's going to happen you know and that, that was back in the day where people yeah. didn't sue you, right, you right, know? Yeah. and so he goes well he goes uh, he goes uh, I might have to give you a couple of days off. I said you can give me a year off I don't give a shit I said but I'll tell you what I said anybody put their hands on my sister I'm going to kill him mm-hmm. I said you'd be lucky that guy's still alive dude <laughs> Yeah. so he's like looking at me and then he, <laughs> he's, he gets in his car and he drives off. And then he comes back, and I'm still taking out the trash. I'm like, where the hell did he go? And he gets this six-pack, and we're taking the trash out. And he goes, 
Dude, I, he, goes, I, he goes, I and me and him, we're tilting back these beers. And he's going, I understand you, man. He goes, I, I seriously do. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay. I said, so what's the big deal? He says, well, I said, you can give me some time off. He goes, I would if I could afford to. <laughs> you know? But that's, that's, you know. That's just the duty of yeah. being a big, uh, an older brother to a sister. Yeah, I mean, I'm, man, I'm telling you, dude. I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah, man. And and it's it, it's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, I even preached that with yep. my older son to my, to about his little brother. I said, you no matter what, I'm like, the most important thing, I'm like, you always protect your brother. Oh, yeah. Watch out for oh, him. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. My older brother's always looked out for me, which I had, I was the youngest of three. I had two older brothers. It made my life a lot easier. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I was able to go up to the next level, like from junior high school to high school, and I had... My older brothers, people knew my brothers, so I was yeah. like, so it was an easy transition for me because they always looked out for me, even though they, may, you know how it is with brothers, like you know what I mean, yep. like they, yep. you fight and you don't always get along, but when it all came down to it, that was the most important thing. Side by side, yep, baby. yep, in the trenches, yep, yeah, always, and so you guys are gonna have that. It's, it's yeah, it's bound to come. Yeah, in this, it's it's gonna you know, hopefully not too soon. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, <laughs> time is flying though. Time is hopefully, it'll flying. be comical enough where yeah. you, where you could just like, okay, right, yeah, know. sit back and just be like, yeah. that. Yeah. and hopefully nobody is really hurt. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, right, right, absolutely. I never saw that guy again. <laughs> yeah, I was just happy he never surprised. came back again. <laughs> he never came back. Yeah, like he had his stakes with yeah. his hands somewhere else. And, 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 every, and everybody at the bar never grabbed an ass again <laughs> yeah, either. Yeah, no, nope. <laughs> <Don't laughs> but but. Everybody was like real thankful at the at the restaurant. They were like, "Man, we didn't ever see that dude again. Takes a lot, man. You know, he's, he's <laughs> yeah, he's a creep. Maybe I mean, crazy. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome, Tim. Uh, amazing show. <laughs> I, I I can't say enough. Um, we got lucky that we actually got to talk to you twice. And yeah. if I am correct. There were two completely different shows. This may have been better. I don't even know. It's <laughs> yeah. amazing. Um, love talking to you, man. And, and we'll definitely do some more stuff together. Same to you guys, man. Thank um, you. Thank you. Congratulations on, on everything, man. Yeah. Just like who you are. And, and you got to write the book. You got another book coming out. Uh, yeah. I don't know I'm when, gonna, but like, yeah, you know, we'll. It's going to take some doing. Yeah, sure. Hey, but well, you're, you're, but doing you're doing it. these things and you're talking to these kids and, and, and really embodying the 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 father that you know we should all strive to be and and mm -hmm. i love that about you and uh that's why you're a perfect addition for this show so i appreciate well, you coming on and giving us your time and hopefully uh you know there's somebody out there that's listening to it that can really take take in what what we're talking about tonight and especially what you are and you know i'm you know what dude i'm so happy to be here when i knew this was going down man i was like all geeked up this morning. I was just like, yeah. I'm like, I get to talk to two guys, you know, I'm, I'm, having, I'm sitting here talking to two friends, having fun, making a podcast. I said, it's unbelievable, you know, wild times. And, and, and we're talking about good things, man, and have a couple drinks and doing what we need to do, you know, but we're, we're, we're doing it in the right to make a, to make a better world. A sure. Better yeah. Place. That's That's the goal. Yeah. And then love talking dads, man, do, I would, I would do anything for this. I'll, we I appreciate, appreciate that, man. That. Yep. So you Absolutely. appreciate that. Yep. So uh, what we will do is uh, we'll definitely do a link uh, or, you know, we'll, we'll just put something out there that people can contact us to get a copy of your book. Yeah, that would be cool. I think, I think dads need to read this book. Absolutely. Uh, I'm about, uh, Thank you. oh, maybe a third of the way through my second time. Uh, <laughs> well, really, I guess it's my third time reading it. But, uh, you know, if it's, a, it's, it's such good information and you can... I like reading it in the light of thinking of my kid. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I think maybe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you maybe wrote it to think about yourself. But I'm at the stage in my life now where when I read it, I think of my son more mm -hmm. than anything. There you go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's what's really cool about it is it's such a personable story. And, it, and it's a bunch of little stories, right? Like yeah, that, that, that culminate into one message. And I always tell people too that when I said, when you read that book, I said, just keep reading and give me a chance. Cause I said, there's a little asshole that thinks he knows yeah, everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what it's about. I thought I knew everything. Sure. Yeah. And, and we all did. Yeah. You know, yeah. 
But I love that you put it on paper yeah. and you shared your story because it, it is incredible and there's so many lessons to be learned. So we're definitely going to uh, uh, put something out there so yep, that our, our sure. people can promote it and make, can get a chance to get a copy. Way cool, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Um, anything else to add for us tonight? Love you guys, man. Just like I appreciate said. Yeah, we that, love man. you love too, you. man. <laughs> yep. Looking Steve, forward you got to anything? No, More man. Things, I man. think yep. it's all been said. Cool. So cool. awesome, awesome time yep. with you, man. Thank you for coming on all again. Right. Hey, you know what? I guess maybe it's selfish, but we were happy to have you and yeah, hundred percent. Share these stories again because <laughs> yeah. it's really cool to sit here and uh, just just to hear you talk. I mean, your stories are amazing, and it's um, it's very eye opening for us, and we take a lot from it. So thank you again. All right, um, man. And everybody, check out this book, and as always, check us out. You know, yeah, hey, uh, new stuff, new stuff. Check us out. Check out on www.thetalkingdads.com. The website Our has website dropped. is officially Sweet. launched. Sweet. Um, so we're going to be keep uh, adding to that. But you can mm-hmm. listen to all the episodes on there. You can read some blog posts. Uh, you can buy some merch. You can buy some merch uh, Which on is there. cool. Yep. And then uh, we're working on this blog thing, too, to where we can kind of take stuff that we've learned along the way. And we're going to do some bourbon stuff on there, too. We, you know, just kind of dabble into a bunch of stuff. But yep, it's really absolutely. cool. It is live. So uh, go ahead and check that out. Check that out, and then of course subscribe on your uh, favorite podcast app of choice. Um, you know the deal. Amen. That's it, man. Yeah. I appreciate you yeah. so much. This is a lot of fun. This was uh, this was an awesome episode. So I appreciate that. All right. Yeah. Thank you. In the meantime, for all of you out there, raise, raise good, good humans. humans. Yes, <laughs> as always. Yes. Thank Peace. you. Thank you. All right. Hey guys, if you love what you just heard or watched. And we know you did. Do us a solid and hit that thumbs up. Share with your friends and throw us a comment. Literally about anything. Your support legit keeps us going. Oh, and don't forget to give us that five-star rating. We really appreciate you.